our foundation. <laughs> Hallelujah. We talked about it last Sunday morning. We talked about it this past Tuesday night. Hallelujah. I had an opportunity to preach on Tuesday night for a change. And Sunday morning anointing got on me. <laughs> my, my, my. But we talked about the foundation. That's what I want to go back to this morning. A subject so important. Yeah. This is how important it is. If you miss this, everything else you do will be in vain. Right. If you mess up with the foundation that must be laid first right. before you can work and build upon that. Amen. No matter how great your house looks. Right. No matter how beautiful. No matter how much effort and sweat and blood you put into building it. Right. If your foundation is wrong, Come on. the house will not stand. Amen. 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 Go with me to the book of Luke, the sixth chapter. We read this Tuesday night. I'm going to read Luke's account of it, then we're going to go over to Matthew, and we're going to read what Matthew had to say about it. Luke, the sixth chapter, the 46th verse. Jesus speaking says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and digged deep right. and laid the foundation on a rock. Mm -hmm. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house yeah. and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. We're talking about the foundation today. Yes. But he that heareth and doeth not mm -hmm. is like a man... That without a foundation, Ball. listen to me, built a house upon the earth uh -huh. against which the stream did beat vehemently. Now the same stream. Yeah. Look at the scripture. The same stream that hit the house of the man that built had a foundation upon the rock. Yeah. The same stream comes against this man. You see it rains on the just and the unjust. If you think... You're going to get in church and everything's going to go hunky-dory and come up roses and you ain't never going to have a problem and everything's going to be fine and all your bills are always going to be paid. You're going to have extra money and you're never going to be sick again. And Brother Billy, that sounds silly. Yeah, but we got a lot of nuts out there preaching that. Amen? Right. But if you think those things, you're wrong. Amen. Amen? That's true. You go through things whether you're a sinner or whether you're a saint. Amen? Right. You go through things whether you come to church and you live for the Lord or whether you don't. Everybody Amen. goes through things. Amen? difference is you don't have to go through them alone amen yeah but it says the same stream did beat vehemently upon this man's house right this is the difference the sad difference immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great all right now go with me to Matthew the seventh chapter Matthew the seventh chapter. And this is the way Matthew tells it. The words of Jesus. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. We're going to pick it up right there. There's a lot of good reading. Of course, it's good reading from Genesis all the way to Revelation. But I always have a hard time because I want to read you the whole chapter. Right. <laughs> and if it continues, I want to go on. But we'll pick it up right there where Jesus says, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Amen? Right. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. have we not prophesied in thy name? Yeah. And in thy name have cast out devils. Right. And in thy name, now don't miss this, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Yeah. Don't miss that. Come on. We've done many Wonderful works. You know, many people today trust in their works to get them in. Come on. Well, according to these people, whether they were telling the whole truth or not, because when you put in a picture in the corner or on the hot seats, you might be telling a lie. But according to them, they did many wonderful works. Amen. Come on. And he said, And then will I profess unto them, mm -hmm. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, 
I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Yeah. This is the house that had the foundation. Amen? That had the right foundation. Amen? The floods came, the winds blew, it beat on the house, but when the storm ceased, the house still stood. Right. Now listen to this. And everyone, I'm in verse 26, chapter 7 of the book of Matthew, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended. Now see, Luke said, that had no foundation, built his house upon the rock, upon the earth. I'm sorry. Had no foundation, built his house upon the earth. Matthew said, which built his home upon the sand. Now listen what happens. The same thing that happened to the man who had the right foundation happens to this man with one huge difference in the outcome. And the rain descended. Same rain that fell on the man that had built his house upon the rock. And the floods came. The same floods that came and beat against the house that was built upon the rock. And the winds blew. The same wind blowing against the house that was built upon the rock is now blowing against this house that has no firm foundation. The winds blew and beat upon that house. But this time when the storm ceases, the words of Jesus are these, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Matthew says that this man... That foundation was not right, built upon the sand. Yeah. Luke says he had no foundation. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about the same thing. Right. And great was the fall of this house. Right. Because, listen, this the wise man that went and built his house, no doubt he had to buy materials. Mm -hmm. He had to put a lot of sweat. He didn't say he hired somebody. It said he built, he built it. Right. Amen? Amen. So I'm taking it at his word that this man worked long hours. Yeah. That he that he 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 he, he fixed his he built his house and he, he laid the foundation and he 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 went over his plans and he, he made sure that, that he was doing the work and that he worked from sun up to sundown and, and he, he put in blood, sweat, and tears over his house. Amen. The foolish man did the same thing. Right. The foolish man put in long hours working on his house. Right. The foolish man had sweated. He had he had mourned over it. He had he had had uh, he had worked over it. He had spent his energy and his time and his money. Yeah. Come on, preach. But when the winds came, uh -huh. whenever the rains came, yeah. whenever the floods came. Yeah. This man's house, the fall of it was great because he had put in so much effort, but all of his effort was in vain. He had put in so much work, but all of his work was in vain. He had invested all of his money, but all of his money was in vain because his foundation was wrong. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Yes. Because his foundation was wrong. Exactly. You see, their works may have been just as good. Let me go a little bit farther than that this morning. The foolish man's work might have been better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Let that sink yeah. into our cranium this morning. The foolish man's work might have been, he might have been a, been a better carpenter yeah. as far as the building of the house goes. Amen? Yeah. His works may have been better. Yeah. Your works today, you might compare your works to others and you might think your works are not as good or you may think your works are better. But the most important thing is what foundation you're bi what foundation you're building your works upon. Amen. His works may have been better. Amen. His works may have been may have been a lot better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But his foundation was wrong. tainted. It was messed up. It was wrong. Yeah. And when the foundation is wrong, yeah. everything you build on it will not stand. Amen. Yeah. There's only one way, Brother Dave, to make sure the things you do in this life count in the next, and that is to make sure they are built upon the solid foundation.
foundation. Amen. That's true. We're talking about the foundation this morning. Absolutely. No matter how great your works are, right. if you're there, there have been a lot of people that have came and gone in the history of this world Come on. that chose a road of poverty right. so that they could give what they had to the poor. They have, they, I use Mother Teresa a lot for an example because she's the one that comes to mind. And you see the life that she led to feed the hungry and to be a missionary and to care for those. But if her foundation wasn't right, all of that was done in vain. All of that was done in vain. You can give your body to be burned. You can... Give the clothes off of your back to clothe the naked. Mm -hmm. You can give your food to feed the poor. Yeah. You can give every dime you ever make. And you can give every bit of it to help the needy and to help those that are in need. Yeah. But if your foundation is not right, Amen. every bit of it is in vain. Amen. It's not going to help you any. Right. When you wake up in hell, come on. The fact that you fed the poor is not going to bring you any peace. Come on, the fact that you cared for those that could not care for themselves is not going to bring you any peace. Come on. If your foundation is wrong, yeah. all of your work is done in vain. Now, I expect to get an email or two because I did the last time I made a statement like that, but it's the truth anyway. Amen. It's the truth anyway. Right. This man, whose foundation wasn't right, all of the work that he did after that, when the storm came and the floods came and the wind came, all of his work was done in vain. And great was the fall of it. Yeah. It's bad enough when you waste your, waste your life with righteous living. <clears throat> it's bad enough whenever you spend your life just meaningless. You don't help anybody. You don't do anything. You know, we could sit back and see, and, and it's sad, it's a terrible grief, but you can sit back and see how, oh, that's pitiful. You know, they just... But you take someone who has done good deeds. They have done good works. They have sacrificed in their own life to make sure that others have what they need. That person has wasted their life. Oh, they did some good for those that were in this life. But this life ain't all there is. Amen. Amen. You may have fed somebody in this life. You may have clothed somebody in this life. You may have helped somebody along the way, and that's good. But it won't amount to a hill of beans once you hit hell. Amen. Amen. You might, if, you might have fought some of those holy wars back Oh, yes, then. yes, yes. You may have gave your life for the cause. Yeah. But if your foundation was not right, that's what we're talking about this morning. We're talking about our foundation. Amen? Yeah. You see, salvation cannot be built upon works. Works can certainly be built upon salvation. Yeah. But getting this ox before the horse is deadly. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Getting this ox before the cart. Mm -hmm. Or the cart before the ox. Amen? Getting the cart before the ox here is deadly. Amen? Yeah. Because thinking that works is good enough mm. will land you in the same hell as those that had no works. Right. Yet they had no foundation either. Amen? True. So this can be very, very deadly unless you have your foundation right. Amen. Unless you have your foundation right this morning, this can be very deadly. Amen. It has eternal consequences. Yes. It's not something you can, oh, well, I can go back and redo it. Mm -hmm. I'll come back as somebody else. No, that don't work. Amen. Right. Once a tree falls, she lies where she fell. Amen. Exactly. There is no coming back and making things right later. Absolutely. Salvation, which comes only, not by works, but in faith in the finished work, of the cross of Calvary is the only foundation in which that which we can build upon in this life that will last. Amen. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 3 and 10. According to the grace which is given unto me as a wise master builder, 
Don't you like how all the Word of God just like goes right together like a puzzle and locks Amen. in place? Amen. Let's see what Paul says about this foundation. I think you could go to Paul who, who probably is, is the greatest apostle that ever lived. Amen. Amen. You can go to him to find out instruction in this subject and see what he has to say about it. Yeah. He says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Now, what was the foundation? It was the message that he preached. It was the message of the cross that he preached. It was the fact that he told them it's not in works. It's not in keeping the law. It's not in circumcision circumcision or uncircumcision. Oh, it's in Jesus Christ. It's the foundation that he stood before them. And I've got the scripture up here. And he said, I determined not to know anything among you except Christ and him crucified. Amen. That's the foundation that he's talking about. Right. And I'll prove, prove that to me, Brother Billy. I'm going to. Hold on. I have laid the foundation. And another man buildeth thereon. Yep. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Amen. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid. Works. That's not what he says next. He doesn't say that there's no other foundation than good works, good deeds, hmm. penance. He says no other foundation. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. What's he talking about? What Jesus come to do? Save the world. He came to die on the cross. How did he save the world? His death on the cross. That's the foundation that Paul is talking about. No other foundation can be the foundation that Jesus speaks of over there. He's talking about His Word. What does His Word point to? From Genesis to Revelation. What is, it, what is the center of it? What, does it? what does it rotate around? What is the main focus of it? The cross of Calvary and the finished work of the Lamb of God that took place there that day on Calvary. Amen? Yeah. That is the foundation this morning. Brother Dave, if you mess this up, you mess the whole thing up. If you miss this boat, you have missed it completely. Amen. Right. You will not. You will, there. There is no fix for this. If you miss this, Amen. when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and we played that song this morning as we were having prayer service. Yeah. There's no work that I've accomplished. No, my goodness, shall I plead. But let the blood of Jesus, the blood of Calvary, speak for me. Hallelujah. When we stand before Him, we will not stand there adorned in our own works in order to attain salvation. We will stand there in blood, washed robes, washed in the blood of the Lamb through faith. If you get to heaven, it will be because of your faith in what Jesus Christ did as He was suspended between heaven and earth. And He hung there with blood running in His eyes. And His last breath, His last words was it is finished. I have done the work that the Father sent me to do. I have accomplished His will. The plan is complete. Now all that come to me, if you are thirst, come to me and drink of this living water that I have made a way for you to have. That's our foundation this morning. Amen. That is our foundation. And if you miss that, mm -hmm. you, miss the, you miss it all. If you mess that up, yeah. then everything that you build. Right. If your foundation today is works, then everything that you do, you do in vain. Right. You help people, sure, here in this life. Uh -huh. But it has no eternal consequence for them. Well, it has eternal consequence for you. Yes. If you trusted in that, you'll find out that your foundation was wrong and great will be the fall of everything that you have built. Amen. Paul says, No other foundation can no other for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah. He says, Now if any man build upon this foundation, yeah. what foundation? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. If you build upon this foundation, right. gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest. Yes. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. Yes. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. You see, some people, even though their foundation is right, their works are off the mark. Right. Amen. Right. 
they're, they're, our works can be off the mark. If you do things today for gratification of man, your work will be tried for, but with fire, and it will not. You will not receive a reward because of it. Amen. The only works that you will receive a reward for is because you have done them for the cause of Christ. You have done them out of obedience to the Word of God, not for the applause of man, not for the plaudits of the masses, not for the pats on the back, not for glorification of the flesh. But you've done those things because of obedience to the Word of God and because of a heart that sincerely wants to work for God. Amen. Every man's work will be tried yes. with fire, whether it's gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. Come on. And it says, If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, yeah. he shall receive a reward. Yeah. But listen to what it says next. Mm. If any man's work shall be burned, mm. he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved. Mm. Yet so is by fire. Why? Not because of his works, but in spite of his works, because his works were burned up. They were frivolous. They didn't come to anything. Maybe he didn't have any. Maybe the ones he did have, they were done for the wrong reasons. But his foundation was right. Even though his works, listen to me, this is important this morning. If any man's works shall be burned, meaning if any man has no works left, yeah, once they've been tried by the fire of God, right. he shall suffer loss, meaning he will not receive a reward. Come on. It won't be such a happy occasion when you get no rewards. Amen. Of course, there'll be the joy of salvation and knowing that you won't go to hell. Yeah. But there is a joy in receiving rewards that you will not experience. Amen. But he, even though he shall suffer loss. Yeah. You see that man we read about that built upon the sand? Uh -huh. He suffered loss. He lost it all. Yes, sir. This man here whose foundation was right uh -huh. when his works were burned up, even though his works didn't stand, yeah. his salvation did because his foundation was right. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Not by his works, but in spite of the frailty or the lack of his works, he is saved. Why? Because of his faith in the work, the finished work of Jesus Christ. So we see he is saved not by works or his lack of works, but by the foundation whereupon he built. You see that this morning? Yes, sir. Isaiah says in 28 and 16, I'm going to give you three scriptures. You don't have to go there, but Isaiah 28 and 16 says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste, meaning he will not be moved when trouble comes. He will not be shaken when the storm comes. He will not run when because of the enemy because he's founded upon a solid foundation. His faith is in the right place. He says, I have laid in Zion. What does he say? He says, the Lord has laid in Zion for a foundation, a stone. Talking about Jesus Christ, amen, and His finished work. A tried stone, a precious stone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Romans 9 and 33 says, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on Him shall not be ashamed. Now what is this rock of offense? Paul said the preaching of the cross was foolishness. To them that are lost, but it's the power of God and the salvation for us that are saved. Amen? Yeah. Come on. He talked about the preaching of the cross being a stumbling block to the Jews. Right. Why? Because they believe you had to go by the ceremonial law. Mm. When a man comes along preaching the cross and faith in the cross is what brings salvation and not works and not obedience to the ceremonial law, that became a stumbling block to many Jews then. And still today. Amen? Amen. So he's talking about this rock of offense. Come on. This stumbling block is the gospel of the cross of Christ. Amen. First Peter 2 and 6 says, Wherefore, also it is contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Yeah. Shall not be disgraced. Shall not be ashamed is what that word means. Wow. He will not be confounded. He will not be tossed about by every wind 
of doctrine that comes along that makes you to believe that if you fast, you can be saved. If you do a 40-day positive thinking thing, you can be saved. If you go through these ceremonial laws, you can be saved. No, he will stand as Martin Luther did when he nailed his thesis to the door of the Catholic Church and said, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Not in the law, not in works, but the just shall live by faith. Amen. Good thing y'all ain't sitting on the front pew because I spit. <laughs> Listen to this. Psalms, two, uh, Psalms 127 and 1. It says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain to build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. Except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain that build it. Right. Except your house is on the f a solid, firm foundation, Brother Rodney, your labor is done in vain. Amen. Unless it's built the way that God says to build it. All right. Amen? Amen? Unless your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand because works is sinking sand. Denominationalism is sinking sand. Religion is sinking sand. Self-righteousness is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. <coughs> when darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace. Do you hear that? Amen. When darkness seems to hide God, I rest in His unchanging grace. <coughs> I trust His Word. Brother David, when it seems like you're so sick, you can't put one foot in front of the other. Right. <coughs> you prayed, might have prayed all night, and ain't nothing better. Yeah. Brother Rodney, whenever it seems like the darkness you're going through has hid the face of God, yeah. rest in His unchanging grace. Amen. No, listen, no. That man that was going through the storm, When the rain, the man, that, the wise man that built his house upon the rock and had his foundation right. When the rain hit, when the winds blew, he could look out his window and he could see the dark clouds. He could hear the wind. He could hear the rain. He could hear it beating upon his house. But his confidence was that his foundation was right. That his foundation was right. The foolish man that built his house upon sand that had no foundation to speak of. When the rains blew, when the winds came, <coughs> when the rains fell, when the winds blew, right. he began to feel his house move. Amen. It might have dawned on him at the last minute. Oh no. Huh. I didn't get the foundation. Yeah. I didn't get the foundation right. <laughs> right. Oh no. My foundation's not right. Mm. The house is moving and it's going to fall. The foundation is weak. Can you imagine the fear or the grief that's going to grip the heart and the soul of man that stands before God and thought they were going to stand there in their own righteousness and thought they were going to stand there and rely upon their own works and thought they were going to stand there upon the foundation that they thought was built. When they begin to see it crumble, they're going to know my foundation was wrong. All the works that I did were for naught. All the works that I did were for naught. You will receive no reward for your works when you go to hell. Amen. Not your good works. You're going to, there'll be a reward for the wicked, of course. Yes, sir. My foundation's wrong. Can you imagine the fear? Can you imagine the overwhelming burden of grief as they stand there realizing my works are not good enough? My works are not good enough. Yeah. My deeds are not good enough. My religion was not good enough. Right. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Amen. 
His oath, His covenant, His blood. Support me in the, well, in the overwhelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, He then is all my hope and my stay. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and His righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy trust in Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And the fool found that out. The foolish man found that out. God's trying to tell us today there is a foundation that is laid and that's the only foundation you can build upon today. Amen. Paul would go on to talk to the church of Galatia. And we've talked about this before. I'm trying to close. Galatians 3 and 1. He would talk to the Galatians. He would say, Oh foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whom, whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you? What's he talking about? What truth? What have they forsaken? What have they been bewitched by? The, the, the Galatians were trying to go into works. They were trying to leave the salvation found only by faith in the work of Jesus Christ and put faith in other things. If you go over to the fifth chapter, it says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall, not, shall profit you nothing. Now what's he talking about? If you trust in circumcision, Christ shall profit you nothing. Amen. If you trust in your works today for salvation, the cross of Christ has become of no effect for you. All salvation is found there unless you put something else first and then you cannot find salvation there because your faith is not there. It's in something else. It becomes of no effect to you. Amen. Listen to what he says. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. If you are trusting in circumcision, you can't just, just trust in circumcision. You're a debtor to the whole law. You have to keep the whole thing from start to finish. If you break one up, you broke them all. Amen. That's not what I'm, what I'm teaching. That's what the Bible teaches us. Right. You're a debtor to the law and the law cannot save you. Amen. Listen to what he tells them. Christ has become of no effect to you. Why? Whosoever of you are justified by the law because you are fallen from grace. You see, a lot of times we talk about, well, this preacher fell from grace because he was caught in sin. This person fell from grace because he was caught in sin. No, you know what the real meaning of fallen from grace is? Is whenever you remove your faith in the cross of Jesus and His finished work and you put it in something else. You see, you have removed yourself. You have fallen from the work of grace. Because the work of grace does not come by work, but by the works of the flesh. The work of grace is done by what the finished work of Jesus Christ administered to us by the Holy Spirit that draws us to His cross. Alright. That's good. Christ has become of no effect to you. Come on. You have fallen from grace, He says. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision availeth, but faith which worketh by love. He says you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? What truth? The truth that is found in the cross of Calvary and His finished work. Paul would say in Galatians 6 and 14, talking to the same people, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 2, he would say, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Why? Because in 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, Paul said, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Right. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath God not made foolish the wisdom of this world? He's talking about 
The cross of Christ. Listen to what he says. Drop down to verse 22. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, the wisdom of God. Talking about our foundation this morning, and I'm closing. Amen. Paul would say in Colossians 1 and 20, And having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself. By Him, I say, Paul was a pretty forceful preacher. Not by any other means, but by Him. Whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. You see, there was nothing in heaven that was good enough to save you. Nothing in earth, that includes the law. Nothing in earth that was good enough to save you. It took the blood of the Lamb of God. It took the finished work of Jesus Christ to save us and settle our salvation. If you continue, listen to what he says. And you that sometime alienated in enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now hath He reconciled, how? By His blood on the cross. In the body of this flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unremovable and unreprovable, I'm sorry, in His sight, how? Through His blood that He shed on the cross. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, in faith in what? Faith in works? No, that's not what Paul's teaching us. Faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. What was the gospel? The cross of Jesus Christ. His finished work there. Salvation found through that and only through that. The hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. He would say in Colossians 2 and 14. And this is one of the scriptures that we opened up this series that we've been preaching on. Talking about His finished work of the cross, it says in Colossians 2 and 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to His cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In what? In His cross. I can't, I can't impress you today how important it is, express to you today how important it is to make sure that your foundation is right and that the only foundation that can be laid has already been laid and that is faith in the finished work of the cross of Calvary and what Jesus has done for us. Amen. This would cause Paul to say this, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. This would cause Paul to say this, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against that day. My faith in Him, not my works. My faith in His blood and His finished work, not my righteousness. That is my foundation today. And if I build on that, the winds are going to come. The rains are going to come. Yeah. The storms are going to rage. Amen. But if my foundation is right, mm. when the storm settles, when the dust clears, I will still be standing on the firm rock of ages. Amen. Yeah. I'll still be standing to the only answer that the Bible has to offer today. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. The only hope for mankind is the message of the cross. The only hope for the born again believing, the Christian that is walking the walk of faith is the message of the cross. Come on. Because you're going to mess up. You're going to fall. You're going you're to goof up. You're going to sin. But thank God His cross and His unchanging grace remains immovable today. Yes. That's where our foundation is at. Amen. The faith that we put in the cross of Calvary and nothing else. True. Faith in Him is all that matters. Yes. Amen. Come on. And not faith that He's going to do it in the future. Faith that He's already done it. Right. 
Those in the Old Testament looked forward to the cross. Come on. That's what the blood of the lambs and the bullocks and the rams and all that was for. That's what this tabernacle represented. Right. That which was to come. Now we that are on this side, we look back with faith in what's already been done. Amen. Not what's going to happen, but yes. what has happened. Right. Amen. Not faith in a heaven up there, but faith in the one who made the way for us to go to heaven. Yes. Amen. Right. Faith in his finished work. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning have something before we go.